Hello everyone, my name is Link, the Trained Unprofessional, and welcome back to Extracurricular Activities. On the last episode, we started back up with Harold's route, and we got a security system in place, so let's see what this next one brings us, shall we? Hmm, it's such a nice day today. Practice should be great. It was a busy day at the Supply Story, too. Supply Story. I guess everyone's stocking up with supplies for homework over the weekend. Where's su the supply store? Still, it's nice being able to work again. You were sitting on the swing on the patio, just enjoying the time you had to relax and think. Harold said he'd pick me up and take me to practice. Uh, I'll just be here waiting for him. I can't believe he called me before his first class, though. It was kind of sweet, because he just wanted to say that he loves me. It does make me happy that he was thinking about me. I really should do something to win in return for him, since he's done so much for me. And since his bear was destroyed, I need to replace it. I should do something for him that can't be destroyed. What, though? Hmm, he likes food, but food only lasts for so long. Then again, learning a recipe he likes and being able to cook it over and over is a plus. Then I could make it for him whenever he wanted it. He also likes to read, and is really into poetry. We have been learning about sonnets in his classes lately, and he seems really passionate about those. Maybe I should write a sonnet for him. Or is that too cheesy? I don't even know if I could write a sonnet. That would sound good. He'd love it no matter how bad it was, I bet. He's a total romantic. Which of these ideas sound better? Recipe, sonnet, or other? I think the sonnet would be a good idea, because... You know, it's what we're learning in class, so it would prove that we're listening, and also he really likes them, and recipes or whatever, but, you know, recipes are good I want to, but I'm gonna go with the sonnet. You know what? I'll try writing him a sonnet. I could even make it look really fancy by putting it in a frame or something. I'll get to work on it right away. Sat down at your desk, pulled out your notes from your recent classes about sonnets, and you opened up a blank Word document on your laptop. Alright, so sonnets are often used as love poems, and since I love him, it seems like a good idea. They are 14 lines, and the rhyme skin goes A, B, A, B, blah, 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 blah. I hope we don't have to write it ourselves. <laughs> I'm supposed to tell some kind of story using metaphors. I think I should read over a few done by Shakespeare, since he seems to be a favorite of Harold's. Sonnet 18 is one of the most well-known love sonnets he ever wrote, according to my notes. Even broke down the parts a bit during the one lecture. I'll read it again and see if it inspires me. Oh, great. Actual Shakespeare in this game. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day that art more lovely than and more temperate? Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, summer leaves... I was actually a freaking competition competitor in a Shakespeare competition, but I'm not even trying right now. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, summer leaves have all the short of date. Sometimes it's too hot at the summer, I don't care. There's so much going on here. <laughs> Maybe writing a sonnet wasn't the best idea. How can I even compare to this? No, that's not the point. I'm not trying to compare it to Shakespeare. I'm not trying to compare it to anyone else, for that matter. It's about me writing something for Harold, and as long as I put my heart into it, that's what counts. Alright, so let's see what I can do before practice. Hmm, light and ignite, being free shield and healed. Everything follows some type of rhyme rule, and it's set up like a sonnet should be. Man, I've been at this a little while now. I'll have to work more on it later, though, and I need to put some more thought into into how to frame it. In the meantime, I need to get ready for practice. Harold will be here soon. After a quick change of clothes, he went back to the main room to wait. Harold was set to arrive at any moment. He didn't have to wait long before there was a knock at the door. Hey, Harold. He grabbed you in his arms and hugged you close as soon as he walked through the door. He set you down after the door was closed behind him. Hey, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm all set. Can I use the restroom real quick so I can change? Of course. I'll be here for you. I'll wait here for you. Alright, thanks. I hear a certain bear in here. Oh, where'd he go? He went to change into his tennis clothes. And you didn't go help him? I'm shocked. He's, he's perfectly capable of doing that himself, Maria. 
<laughs> Good, it's just so easy to tease. Your face is really red right now. That, that's not something I'd expect to hear you say is all. <laughs> I can have some fun every now and then, right? At my expense? Oh, come now. It's not like I said anything terrible. Ah, uh, hello, Maria. Hello, Harold. So happy to see you. I hope you've been well lately. I have been, thanks. You seem to be doing well yourself. Quite so. Things have been nice. Why is your face so red, Thomas? <laughs> oh, I was just teasing him is all. She asked why I wasn't in the bathroom helping you change. <laughs> I see. Well, I'm quite capable of changing myself. That's what I said. <laughs> you two are so cute. I suppose I'll let you run off to practice now. Do you plan on stopping by later? I do. We'll stop by after practice. Wonderful. I'll prepare dinner for you then. You don't have to do that, Maria. Well, I shall. I'll make an easy dinner for you boys. That way you'll have something for after practice. I won't argue with that. I don't think we can, really. Nope. Alright, we'll be sure to draw stop by after practice then. Then I'll see you in again in a few hours. Let's go, Thomas. Right. Uh... So... What? Richard is in the bathroom when I was changing. Okay. Him and Maria must think alike, because he asked why you didn't come in to help ch help, ch help me change, and then offered his own assistance. <laughs> that explains why you look so frustrated when you joined us. He just laughed when I turned him down. I proceeded to ask about the brand of jockstrap I'm wearing, talking about how it seemed pretty durable to be able to, um, to be able to accommodate a guy my size while, um, while I'm so active. Am I really that fat, or... <laughs> to make it look like my jockstrap can't support my size. Are you sure that's what Richard was talking about? What else could he- Oh... Can't see Richard insulting your weight like that, so... I don't know why I didn't put that together with him asking if he if it kept everything in place. I was so embarrassed at that point, I got dressed as fast as I could and didn't even think about it. My poor bear. I'm gonna have to tell Richard to back off my man, huh? <laughs> Maybe. It's kind of weird to think of him finding me attractive. How come? I guess I'm not accustomed to the idea of other men finding me attractive. I think the police officer thought you were cute too. What? No way! Totally. So I'm checking you out. Really? Really. He... he was cute too, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He drummed his fingers along the steering wheel for a moment and glanced sideways at you. It doesn't bother you that I think that, does it? No, it doesn't bother me. Jesus, you're not gonna be fucking insecure. Why would it? It's nothing wrong with thinking another guy's cute. I know the where I stand with you. Oh, uh, okay. I'm uh, relieved to hear that. I got in trouble once for pointing out another woman as being attractive. I got an earful that night, so I kind of she shied away from doing that ever again. Oh, I'm not gonna hold that against you, Harry. Oh, my fucking neck. I did think he was cute too, if I'm being honest. I might have a little bias towards bears, though. He chuckled and gave his leg a squeeze and he put a paw on top of it. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm happy I can talk to you about these things while you're getting mad at me. I'd much rather us talk it over instead of letting it fester. That's the best idea, yeah. I don't want negative feelings between us. The talk the talked lasted most of the drive, and it was only a few more minutes before you were at the courts again. Looks like we got here before everyone else, so we can stretch and get, be ready to start right away. What are we doing today? More practice matches. I'm gonna have you play against Darius today, since you played with Spencer Wednesday. Wouldn't I get more out of playing with Spencer or you? You would, but Darius would get more out of playing against you or Spencer, and Spencer would most likely destroy him. While he's not as good as you, you're still closer to his level than Spencer is. I'll play with Spencer and let Dozer and Chester go against each other. Oh, okay. I guess you've thought this out. I have. Next week, you'll play again with Spencer, and one day, you'll you play against me. Oh, yeah? That should be fun. Don't expect me to go easy on you, either. I wouldn't expect you to. I'll put up a good fight. I don't doubt it. Come on, let's stretch. He stood facing you while you stretched, and during your routine, you noticed he held his poses longer than usual, leaving his belly exposed to the air. 
You even caught a glimpse of his jockstrap running up under over the waistline of his shorts. You noticed him grinning when your eyes moved from his stomach to his face, and he looked away as soon as your eyes locked. He knows exactly what he's doing, the big tease. Once you were finished stretching, he fixed his shorts to make sure his jock was no longer showing, but before you could call him out for, dis for his display, you were joined by on the courts by Spencer. You two here are early. You two are here early. Harold picked me up uh, as soon as his classes were done, and we came straight here. Harold, huh? Didn't know we were on a first name basis here. Or, well, I mean that it's his first name, and, and outside of school, it practice by why would I call him? <laughs> you don't have to explain it to me. I understand what you mean. I just avoid using his name around Darius, or he might assume you two are dating or something. You know how he is. <laughs> yeah, what an odd thing to assume, right? Spencer, you know as well as I do, Darius already knows. Knows. Okay, so maybe it's more obvious to the two of us since the day we took you to, to his place. Since when? <laughs> Spencer drove me to your place the day I kinda just appeared at your house. Darius might have tagged along too. Oh. Don't worry, coach. I understand what kind of implications there are with a teacher dating a student, but I'm not one to make a big fuss about it. Believe it or not, Darius won't run his mouth about it either. If anything, he'll just teach you both in private. I see. <laughs> Looks like some of the other guys are here now. So I'm going to stretch with them since I assume you two are already done. Yeah. No sense in worrying about hiding it around them, I suppose. Those two are so perceptive. Spencer has always been, and Darius just seems to have a knack for that kind of thing. Darius called me out on it Monday, actually. I didn't want to worry, uh, worry you with it, so I didn't mention it. <sighs> really? Do you think Chester and Dozer know too, then? I'm not sure, but I don't think they'd care too much either. I hope not. But like he said, there's no sense worrying about it, right? Worrying won't get you anywhere. Yeah, you're right. If people find out, they find out. What do I do in my personal life is none of their business. Their opinions won't make you love me. Mill won't make me love you any less. Same here, Harold. You're my bear, and I don't care what anyone else thinks about that. I'm glad. Come on, let's get practice started. I want you to destroy Darius today, so give it your all. <laughs> okay, then. I'll do my best. With the team together and everyone ready to start practice, Harold split everyone off like he said he would. You and Darius were sent off to play a match with each other, and you had no intent on going easy on him. How are things going with- how are things with Coach? You two been bumping uglies all week? What?! Bumping uglies, you know, knocking boots, doing the nasty- None of that is going on right now! Things have been a little crazy for us this past week. All the more reason for you to kick back, relax, and get your rock off, rocks off together. It's a great way to- it's a great- fuck. It's a great way to- great- Jesus. Great way to relieve stress. You two should give it a shot, cause God knows he needs it. <laughs> Maybe this weekend we'll give it a try. Come on, let's warm up and get this match started. Wait, what'd you just say? <laughs> This weekend, huh? Beat me in this match and maybe I'll f tell you more about it. Don't make me work for it. I hope you're ready to spill the beans then, because I'm coming at you with all I got. Don't count on me telling you anything, though. Don't tell don't count on me telling you anything, though, because there's no way you're going to win. We'll see about that. Maybe that will encourage him to really play against me instead of slacking off. Doesn't matter, though. There's no way I'm going to lose, since I have the best motivation. He looked over towards Harold and he waved at you as you got ready to start his warm-up with Spencer. There's no way I'm going to let him down. Damn it, I didn't think I was going to lose to you that badly. We had some pretty high stakes, uh, and I wasn't taking any chances. There were some close games, though. Next time I'll get you. <laughs> I don't, didn't really have, to say much, have much to say anyway. We're just going to have dinner together and watch something at the theater. And then head back to his house to bang, right? If the mood is right, maybe. Who knows, though? Dude, you gotta keep those things in mind. What happens if you guys start to get down and dirty and realize there's no lube? Or maybe the condom box is empty. That's never any fun. But <laughs> I don't think that'd happen anyway. There's n well, there's no way you're gonna be on bottom without big, uh, big I think his dick is since you're virgin and all. And not, that's not to say that you can't be on top, though. 
Everyone else is still playing, so come with me for a moment. What in the world is going through his mind right now? There is not beside his tennis bag and motioned you down beside him. After digging out for a moment, he produced a small bottle and a couple of square packets. Is that... Collins and lube. I keep, um, keep it on hands at all times. Take it. I'm, I'm not taking this from you. Dude, you should always be prepared. What if he isn't? You two just gonna go bareback? For all you know, he has an STD from his ex. I, I don't think he does. Have you asked him? Or has he told you? No. Then you don't know. You better off being safe than sorry. So take this stuff. I have plenty to go, plenty of it around. Regardless, you guys, it's gonna need lube. <laughs> they need the lube. Man, this bottle is mostly new. I've only used it like twice. It's high quality stuff. A little bit goes a long way. He held the items out to you for everyone to see, and you quickly snatched them out of his hands and shoved them into your pocket. Fine, I'll take it. That's what I thought. I'm sure you'll find it all to be useful. But thanks, Darius. See, this is the kind of shit Darius, like, this happened in the Chester route, too. Where Darius just seemed, like, remarkably helpful. <laughs> Don't mention it. If you ever need some advice, just ask me. I'd like to think I could offer you some good tips on making that bear purr. <laughs> Bears don't purr, though. Oh, trust me, bears can purr. You just gotta coax it out of them. So I expect you tell me if you got him to purr at the very least. <laughs> okay, if I hear him purring, I'll be sure to tell you then. I'll be waiting for the good news Monday, then. What's going on over here? Just talking over the results of our match, Thomas didn't seem to have any trouble beating me. Is that so? Hey, he put up a good fight. He just messed up more than I did. I got outplayed pretty badly. It'll take some work for me to catch up to him, but you better believe I will. That's the spirit. I really like to hear that, Darius. How'd you do with Spencer? Oh, well. <laughs> Coach lost, too. Spencer's ball control isn't as good as mine, but he moves a lot faster on the court than I can now. He ran on me all over the court, and I just couldn't keep up with him. Sounds like it's time for you to start slimming up, huh? Maybe Thomas can help you with some of the extracurricular activities. Oh, 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 they said the thing! They said the thing, they said the thing, they said the thing! Some ex other extracurricular activities to burn up some of them extra calories. I know some great routines that really help out if you're interested. Maybe we should start going to the gym more. That'll help out, I'm sure. Not what I was implying, but that could work too. Harry's picked up his bag and made his way off the courts. I'm sure Thomas gets it. I don't know what else we could do. Maybe we start jogging in the morning before class. But I really like my sleep. I don't think he was really knocking your weight, Harold. He put it. He put his paws on his belly and st was staring down at it, giving it a small, uh, some small bounces while he spoke. I could cut back on the sweets too, and I guess that would help dial the weight back a little, right? I suppose that would help me slim down some, slim up some. I'm pretty sure he was implying something else there. Call it a hunch. Like what? He was implying that we, um, you know. He stared at you for a moment, then the realization washed over him. Oh, I, I guess that makes sense. Coming from Darius, that, that went right over my head. I'm so oblivious today. Jeez, those guys really are something else, aren't they? Spencer and Darius? Yeah, they definitely are. I'm gonna go check on Dozer and Chester's match now, so you can practice serving or something. We have to wait until they are done before we head out. Sure, no problem. You gathered some balls and started on your serves. The other match lasted another half hour before it ended. Harold stayed on the court with Dozer and Chester came over to talk to you. Looks like you two had a pretty tight match there. We did! We pushed over it in the third set, and I was able to break his serve and gave me the edge to win! It was a lot of fun playing with Dozer. How'd your match go with Darius? I imagine that it was full of innuendo and teasing. Surprisingly, it wasn't. It was a legit match, and he put real effort into playing against me. I still won, though. <laughs> Finished it off with just two sets. I figured you'd win, but I'm surprised that Darius was tame throughout the match. He never is when we play together, and it always throws me off. He generally plays head games with his opponents, but he chose to play a different game with me today. How oh, weird. Whatever, though. I had something I wanted to ask you about. What is it? Oh, man, does he know about me and Harold, too? 
Well, me and Tosa were talking about playing a tabletop RPG game, so I was wondering if you might be interested in joining. Never played one of those before, so I know nothing about them. Neither has he, but I have. I plan on being the DM for the game, so I'll be able to help you guys make characters and whatnot. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Will be fun. Oh, Chester was talking about playing some kind of RPG board game or something with him and Dozer. Yeah, Labyrinth and Lizards. <laughs> Labyrinth and Lizards. L and L. <laughs> Are you gonna play with them? Oh, I don't know. When do you guys want to play? Wait, wait, considering Sunday, while Chester is off, we could order a pizza and play that night. We need more people, though, otherwise we won't be able to play. <laughs> you should totally play with them, Thomas. You're free on Sunday, too, I bet. Oh, yeah? I mean, if you guys need more people to play, I'd play, too, if you guys would have me. Really? You'd play, too, Coach? Sure, I bet it could be fun. Would three people be enough to start a campaign, Chester? Yeah, I would ask Spencer, too, and if he said yes, that'd be great. You're gonna ask Darius, too. You know he's gonna turn it down. I don't know. If you tell him who all's gonna be there, he might just change his mind. And ruin all, and ruin the fun. Or add to it. Uh, okay, I'll ask Darius, too. So, you really wanna play with us, too, coach? Yeah, I'll play. And you too, Thomas? Well, I can't very well say no now. It seems like it could be a lot of fun. Awesome! I'll work some more with the, on the campaign tonight, then. You make it a custom one. Modules can be pretty boring, so I like to build my own. It's so much more fun to play that way. Ah, I see. I guess we need to decide where to play now. My place is too small, so how about your apartment, Dozer? My table isn't big enough. We get more people to join, but I guess I could always find some folding chairs. We could play at my house. I have a fairly large table and plenty of space. Oh yeah, we had the team party there too. That isn't a bad idea. You mind if we play there? Not at all. You're all welcome. Sweet. I'll get. I'll, I'll make some more plans to figure out who all is playing. Is six or is around six Sunday evening okay? Yeah, that's not a problem. Awesome! awesome. I, can't I came to the game to play, but there's a place to now. play! I haven't been able to play in a while, and I've been itching to roll some dice again. I have some plenty of stuff for whoever plays, and I'll bring some character sheets for everyone. We'll spend some time making characters, and maybe even start the game. We could play every Sunday then, if you wanted. Man, this is so sad. I used to have a D&D group every Sunday. I was the DM and everything, and then school happened and <laughs> no one could show up. Oh, it's so... it's so sad. That'd be even better. We have more time to talk. We have to talk more about that. I'm really excited now, so I'm gonna go home and start making more plans. I need to call Darius and Spencer, too. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'll help you out if you want. Yeah, sure. We can make some more plans. I'll send you guys a text later on to let you know who I'll be there. Alright, cool. Sounds great. Yeah. Alright, Doza. That's nice that you offered to play with us too, Harold. Well, I used to play l and L all the time in high school before I got together with Diana. I was a huge nerd and I was really into it. She didn't care about it too much though and eventually I stopped playing altogether. It's been so long since I played and the thought of playing again it makes me really excited. Really? That's so cool. I really, I'm really glad that he was he was all happy about having you play too. Then I still have stuff from when I used to play, so I'll have to see if I can find it tonight and I can show it to you. It's a box. There's in a box somewhere in the attic. And I'm sure I know exactly where it is too. Let's get back to the shelter though, so we can eat first. Then we can head to my place afterwards, and we can find all that stuff. Okay, sounds like a good plan to me. Smells like Maria already has dinner cooking. Cooking? It's already done! I just finished it not too long ago. Go wash your hands, and I'll have the table set up for you when you get back. Yes, ma'am. After a quick trip to the bathroom to wash up, you and Harold returned to the dining room table. Maria joined you with a casserole dish, and Richard was behind her with another tray as well. Richard will be joining us tonight. I hope that's okay. Oh, of course it's okay. The more the merrier, right, Thomas? <laughs> yeah. So what'd you make tonight, Maria? 
It's taco bake. A taco bake. We have taco meat mixed with corn, black beans, and sour cream, layered with tortilla chips and refried beans, and all topped with a blended of cheeses. Half of that sounds good to me. How the half, not so much. On the side, we have salsa, jalapeno, cilantro, pico de gallo, and some guacamole. I thought you were gonna keep it simple tonight. Oh, please, this was a breeze to do. Richard even helped me, so it was no trouble at all. I was so helpful chopping up the. What the fuck? I just re. Son of a bitch. I was so helpful chopping up veggies for her. And that was an important part. I just hate dicing up onions, and you suffered through it for me. I'm telling you, you need one of them slappy choppers or stuff like that. It makes chopping stuff a breeze. This woman thinks that too for chopping up vegetables is cheating, so I have to dice up stuff with a knife. But it is cheating. It's not the same as using a knife. Just stubborn cat. Uh, I'm gonna put extra jalapenos in your food if you don't behave. That's fine, I like spicy food, so you can just load it up. Then you won't get any dessert. Urgh. <laughs> now everyone dig in, we'll be having a delicious dessert after dinner, so we can leave some room for that. <laughs> I always have room for dessert, Maria. What kind of treat do you have planned for us? You'll find out after dinner, so eat up! It's her ass! Nah, whatever. Food was scooped out and passed around the table, and soon enough everyone was eating and chatting. Mmm, this is a tasty dish! I haven't had anything like this before! It's a simple recipe, so there isn't much you can... There, so there's much you can... There's so much you can do to customize it. I'll write down the basics for you, that way you'll uh, be able to make it whenever you want. Sounds perfect to me. So how was practice for you today? Pretty great on my end. We just did practice matches to prepare for real matches next week, and I won my match with, against Darius. Marvelous! Do things look good for the team in their matches, Harold? They do! Everyone's doing a great job, and they all seem to be working hard to get, to, to get better. One player in particular has, has a very promising future ahead of him if he keeps playing like uh, he has been. Spencer, right? Yes. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, be like, nah, you. Uh, romance, romance. Yes, I think Spencer could go on to play in the professional tournament. He's certainly skilled enough for it. I need to talk to him about it and see if he's actually considered ever doing anything like that. I've never heard him mention anything about it, but then again, I don't know what kind of degree he's pursuing right now. Well, I'll definitely be talking to him about it. Maybe Sunday, if we see him. Sunday? Do you two have plans for the weekend? Oh, on Sunday a couple of the guys on the team want to play Labyrinths and Wizards. And Lizards, sorry. Uh, and... Lizard Wizard. And I'm letting them play in my place. I have plenty of room for all of them there. And tomorrow I'm taking Thomas to see a musical over in the city. At the main theater complex? Oh great, of course, it's Darius's complex. <laughs> Yes, that's the place. We'll be watching the Cavalier's Guide to Matrimony and Homicide. It's a favorite musical of mine, so I'm beyond excited to be that it'll be showing nearby. Oh my, it sounds like you two have a packed weekend. That ain't the only thing I'll be packed. Jesus! Richard's body jolted and a grimace spread across his face. For a split second you saw nothing but an intense fury glint in Maria's eyes. Of course not! They're going to have a full house, and I'm sure they have plenty of food to fill up on as well. Not to mention, I'm sure the theater would be packed too! Uh, um, yeah, I'm sure it will be. And you'll be being, playing l l too, that's so much fun, I haven't played that in ages! You used to play too, Maria! I did! In college, I got involved with a group that played, I was the only girl, and they were more than happy to have me with them. We were quite. We had quite a lot of fun in a campaign to kill Fahas, destroyer of worlds. That's the Enron campaign, right? Yes, you know about that one. I do. My group played through that campaign as well. It took us months to get through it, but it was so much fun fighting through the Dark Realm Temple to get to the end. So many puzzles to figure out, and there were some really strong enemies. I didn't think we'd all make it through to the end, but my group managed. My group wasn't so lucky. We killed Foz. Foz. But lost two people in the process. 
I guess it was far for the greater good, though. Certainly! You saved the world and who knows how many others because you took him out. Harold and Maria got lost in their conversation about the characters they created and played throughout the time they play they played. Well, those two are nerding out in their own little world now. I bet they wouldn't notice we if, if we cleaned up. Huh, you're right. I don't understand any of what they're talking about now, but I guess we'll all find out in a couple of days. No doubt. Come on, help me clean this stuff up and we'll get dessert ready too. Sure thing. You help Richard gather the empty dishes off the table and move everything to the kitchen. You okay there, Richard? You're kinda limping. Maria smashed my foot after my little comment. It's a little tender. <laughs> I see. Well, I can't say you didn't deserve it. And you can't say I was wrong, either. It's none of my business, really, but I couldn't pass up that golden moment. The pain is worth what that look has on your faces. <laughs> You're an asshole. Oh, no. I bet Maria's gonna be mad at me for the rest of the night. Nah, it was a pretty harmless quip. Even if it was really immature, she wouldn't stay mad over that. That woman might not show her anger on the outside, but you can certainly feel it if it's almost like she's watching and judging me now, even though I know she's in there talking. She'll smile at me and be all friendly, but those eyes, oh, those eyes. Richard shuddered and shook himself around. Anyway, I suppose things are going, going good for you and Harry. It's kind of weird to me that you're dating your teacher slash coach, but far be it from me to judge you. Oh yeah, things are going good. He's been pretty happy, and I've been pretty really happy about it too. You two seem happy together. When are you going to move in with him? Move in with him? He's got a nice place, doesn't he? Nicer than a homeless shelter, I imagine. Yeah. I don't reckon you've been together for, for too long, though, since it might be a bit sudden for that, huh? We've been only dating for a couple of weeks. I uh, see, that might be too soon then. You should date for a couple of months at least. It's something to keep in mind for the future then. I have the cake, so let's get back out there, otherwise they're gonna think we're in here flirting or something. Moving in with Harold, huh? He has enough space for me, but it's way too early for us to consider something like that, isn't it? Thomas, look! Cake! <laughs> yes, I know. I was in the kitchen too, silly bear. The cake looks magnificent, doesn't it? It does! Let's not waste any time and cut into it. Gladly. Harold grabbed the knife and cut himself a large piece of the cake, and then he passed it along the table before everyone before everyone had their cake. He'd already eaten half his piece. Mmm, this cake is just so good. It had to be one of my favor has to be one of my favorites ever since I first had it. This one tastes just as good as the rest. You did such an amazing job, Maria. Why thank you, Harold. I'm glad you enjoyed the cake. He didn't waste any time gobbling down the rest of the cake, and he looked rather satisfied with himself once he was done. Oh boy, am I full now. That was such a delicious dinner. Thank you so much for doing this for us. You're so very welcome, Harold. You know you're always welcome over for dinner anytime. Is there anything I can do to help clean up, or is there anything I can do to repay your kindness? Nah, me and Thomas already took care of the dishes. Uh, dishes already. And there's no need to repay me. I enjoy doing this. As long as you are satisfied from the meal, that's enough for me. You better believe that I'm satisfied. I'm a big happy bear right now. He patted and rubbed his hands over his stomach with a chuckle. Thomas, you have clothes you can wear to the theater tomorrow, right? It doesn't have to be anything really fancy, right? It doesn't have to be. Got your pants, button up shirt, a belt, and a tie would be suitable. I'll be set then. I think I have the vest even. Oh yeah? Well, that'd be perfect then. I bet you look really handsome all dressed up. I bet he does. You two will have to stop by at some point tomorrow just to show off how you look. I'm sure we can make a little, leave a little early tomorrow so we can stop by and show you then. Let me go gather my clothes for tomorrow and if you're ready to go we can head out. Oh sure, you do that and I'll sit here when, while I wait. We're gonna go look for my old L&L stuff back at my place so we, I can show them some of the things before, about it before Sunday. That sounds like fun! Let's see, I'm glad I made sure to keep a couple of sets of nice clothes, 
So pants, shirt, and a belt, and the vest! I do have it, so that's perfect. Knock, knock, knock. Come in. Oh, Maria, do these clothes look like they'd be okay? I don't have a lot to choose from, so I, but I bet this works. Of course! Everything you have laid out looks like it matches perfectly. Do you have any dress shoes as well? Yeah, I don't. I only have my tennis shoes. Hmm. Well, that won't stand out too much, so, I, so don't worry about that. You're gonna look so nice, nobody will even notice. I suppose they won't be looking at my feet, so this is all I'll need for now, then. Oh, and so I don't forget, can I ask you something? What is it? I wanted to do something nice for Harold, since he's done so much for me. He really loves poetry, and I thought that I'd try my hand at writing something for him. It's kind of sappy and a little cheesy, but I think it's something he'd really like. I want to frame it, but I'm short on ideas for how to make it look really nice. Oh goodness, that sounds so sweet! I think you'd love something like that. What could you do to make it look really nice? Do you know if he has a favorite poet? Shakespeare seems to be a favorite of his. Hmm. Well, how about this? Imagine having the poem quilled onto parchment paper before framing it. You could ha ha give it a real classic look, and it could be similar to how Shakespeare did things. You mean using a feather and ink to write on parchment paper? Yes! Sounds like it could look really nice. I'll have to get some supplies for that. It'll take a lot of practice, no doubt. I like the idea, though. And I think the effort will really pay off. Oh, yes, I'm sure it will. Something that heartfelt would just blow him away. Thanks for the idea, Maria. You're so welcome. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Here. Huh? Richard, hand you a pair of dress shoes and a pair of socks. See if these fit ya. If they're a bit big, those socks are thick and it should make up for it. I overheard you say you only have tennis shoes and that just don't work. You're gonna, you ain't gonna dress up all nice and then not have the shoes to match. Aw, oh, that's a perfect idea, Richard. How sweet of you. Yeah, yeah, I just can't stand seeing something like that. Try them on, your feet don't look too different from mine. After a quick test, you found that the shoes fit just fine with the socks. They're near perfect fit! You really don't mind if I borrow them for tomorrow? Of course not, I wouldn't have brought them if I wasn't okay with it. Thanks, Richard! Don't sweat it, you two, be sure to have a good time. Just be sure to let me know how you got when you guys stop by so I can see how snazzy you two look. Well, it looks like I have all you need, so you two should get going. Harold is waiting out there for you. Yeah, it's time. Sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, Richard had a pair of nice shoes for me to borrow, since I only had tennis shoes. Well, that's really nice of him. Do you have everything you need, then? Yeah, I do. We can head off now. You two have a good night and a safe drive home. Thank you for having me over dinner again, Maria. It's always a pleasure. Anytime, Harold. I'm happy to have you here with us. We'll see you sometime tomorrow, Maria. Of course. I'll see you both tomorrow. Have a good night. Hey, Red Fox. Good night, and thank you again. Goodbyes were said, hugs were given, and you left her for Harold's home right after. Fuck, this day never ends. I'll take your clothes for tomorrow and hang them up in the closet in my room. Then I'm gonna take gun to go shower. You can use the guest bathroom to clean up, too. Once I'm done, we'll see about finding my L&L &L stuff. <laughs> sure thing. You, had it over, you handed over your nice clothes and he disappeared off to his bedroom. Time for me to get cleaned up as well. Once you were clean, you made yourself comfortable in the living room while waiting for Harold. Oh my. Ah, uh, much better. I was feeling a bit self-conscious sitting around with Maria about having, uh, without having showered after practice. I didn't expect us to be there that long. I didn't either. But it was nice, wasn't it? It was. I'm gonna leave you alone for just a little longer now. I'm pretty sure I know exactly where the box is in the attic, so I shouldn't be gone long. No worries, I'll just watch TV while I wait. Another 30 minutes went by before you were joined once again by the bear. Okay, so it took me a little longer than I intended. It wasn't where I thought it was, but I did find it. Yeah? Well, let's see what you got then. Harold sat down beside you and placed a dusty box on the table in front of you. It's been so long since I've seen this stuff. He opened the box and his face just lit up as he started pulling things out of it. Oh man, it's been so long. Where do I even begin? Ah, this. Look. 
He pulled out a royal purple velvet bag and poured out a handful of matching dice. I made this bag and it was perfect for my dice. They all match. We have a D2, D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, and a D20. This is, the pretty, this, this is a pretty standard set, but I even have a D50 and a D100 from, uh, for other things. You made the bag yourself. Yeah, I like doing that, doing stuff like that. I made all sorts of things. And I still have some of this stuff in here. See? From the box, he pulled out a couple of small buildings and several other items. I would use paper mache and cardboard to make props for the campaigns. It was so much fun to do. I was a dungeon master for a while, and I would you I would build all the scenes for my party to explore. They always seem to love that. These look really neat, Harold. Is this all you have left? I end up giving a lot of stuff to the group, so they could keep using it after I left. I really miss doing this. Well, if things did go good on a good Sunday, maybe you can get back into it. You think so? It's been so long since I've done it. I think I'd be a little rusty. I bet once you get started, it'll all come back to you. He rolled one of the buildings around carefully in his paws, looking over all the details he had painted on it. He seemed like he was lost in thought. Huh. Maybe I will. You leaned over against him and ran your hand over his knee. Come on, show me what else you got in the box now. I want to see more. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, here, check this out. He pulled out a miniature figure from the box and handed it to you. You looked closely at the intricate details and what had been painted onto it, impressed just to see how fine they were. This is a wizard character I played as. His name was Ragnar, and he proved to be quite useful in many fights. I actually got him to max level, and he was able to summon powerful firestorms in battle. That would just rain destruction all over the place. I get a little carried away sometimes, though. I injured my allies and even leveled a small village once. Oh. I spent a lot of gold making up for that one. You destroyed a whole village. I rolled a nat 20 and made a massive storm that I ended up losing control of. Nobody died, thankfully, but man, the village workers were pissed at me. What's a nat 20? That's a natural 20. That means I rolled the d20 and got a 20 on it, making it an authentic automatic crit. Ah, cool. Sounds like you were a badass then. If something like that was able to destroy a village, I was! Nobody could match me in damage, and I had a lot of utility to offer, too. This character was so epic. And then we have this guy. For the next little while, Harold continued telling stories, telling you stories about his characters and their exploits from games from the past. He was full of excitement as he moved from one character to the next, and it was, and it was a side of him that you had not seen before. And, oh, and this one time, and this one time I... Uh, oh man, I can't breathe. Give me a moment. <laughs> Calm down. Take some deep breaths, then continue. You've been giggling like a fool since the last story. It's just, it was so hilarious. You rolled a one, and the DM was all, <laughs> it was all. You trip while you're rushing in. Roll, roll for a dexterity check. All his points were in strength and charisma, so he was, he was a really buff, handsome human, and he was a negative one in his dexterity. He was dumb as a bag of rocks. He rolled another one, so the DM made him land on his sword, impaling himself. And that's how our level one warrior died while entering our first battle. It was so funny. He tried to be mad, but, but he just couldn't be. Was he just out of the game at that point? Harold rubbed his paws against his eyes and shook his head. Nah, he just rolled another character, another warrior character sheet, and we picked him up after the fight was done. He learned not to dump all of his points into just a couple of stats. We had a bard who even wrote a poem about him, and it would give everyone a boost to dexterity checks when he sang it. I still remember it too. Ahem. He raised one hand up with the other hand and, and placed and against his chest, and he sang out the lyrics in a deep voice. Quick to battle, fly with haste, one war- our warrior's life was full of waste. <laughs> Bold and handsome, but dumb of wit, he charged head first through, he said, though he said sit. I'm not singing the rest of this. A tiny pebble or perhaps a stick, he tripped and fell, his demise was quick. Upon his sword, he impaled his gun, so he died a warrior rut. That's really something the bard wrote. Yes, the DM made him sing it every time he wanted to use it, and he was to the point where our group would sing with him. I could listen to you sing all day with that voice. 
I don't, I'd not mind hearing more of it. He grinned and bumped against you. I do have a nice bear tone voice for singing, right? Ha, clever. You'll have to treat me to some more of that sometime. It certainly sounds like some of the encounters were a lot of fun, though. The game isn't always serious, as you can tell. We couldn't unlock someone's door one time, and we couldn't knock it down, so I set the house on fire to bring the person we wanted outside. <laughs> sounds like you were a bit of a pyromaniac with some of your characters. Fire solves a lot of problems. <laughs> he put an arm over your shoulder and pulled you against him. I hope you have fun playing Sunday. It would really be nice to have a consistent group again. I think I'll have a good time. It seems like it'll be a lot of fun. It is! You can let your imagination go wild, and if you have a good DM, it's even more fun. Just to talk like he knew what he was doing, so, and I hope he isn't one of those super strict DMs. I'm sure he's a chill DM. With a heavy yawn, he leaned his head against yours. I'm really glad you're here with me tonight. Reminiscing has been a lot of fun. Not to mention, my bed is sold really empty lately. It'll be nice to sleep next to you. We'll actually have enough room, and I might not end up on the floor this time. I'm really sorry I pushed you off the bed. I didn't mean to. Are you sure? I figured you just wanted the whole bed to yourself. No, that's not it at all. It was much nicer having you with me. I'm just teasing you, Harry. And speaking of bed, I'm really tired. I'm looking forward to sleeping in tomorrow. You ready for bed then? Are you? I'm sure I won't have any trouble falling asleep. Let's brush our teeth and move to the bedroom then, shall we? Okay. After a stop by the bathroom, you found yourself on the bed under the blankets lying on your back as you waited for Harold to join you. Man, this bed is so comfortable. It'd be nice to sleep on this every night. Maybe one day. You look like you're set. I am, so join me whenever you're ready. Here I come then. The bed shifted and rocked ha around as he sat down and rolled in next to you. It took him a moment before he was settled, and you glanced over to see him staring at the ceiling with his hands folded over his stomach. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I am too. I get to spend a whole day with you. Well, the early day might be kind of boring. We'll leave around 4 to see Maria, head to a reservation for dinner at 5, then just walk to the theater after we eat for the show at 7. That means we can just hang out for the morning and afternoon, right? We can. I don't know what we'll do, but we'll figure something out. You know, we cleaned up the swimming pool, and we still haven't really used it. Maybe we can go for a swim. That's not a bad idea, actually. We could have a really relaxing day. You know, you didn't bring a swimsuit, though, so I guess you'd have to go skinny dipping, right? You'd like that, wouldn't you? I just might. He rolled onto his side, facing you. I was wondering, do you have any particular way you like to sleep? I typically sleep on my side, since it's the most comfortable for me. So I guess we'll go with side. I like sleeping on my side, too. Would it be okay if I slipped against you? Of course it's okay, so get over here. You made yourself comfortable and Harold moved uh, over closer to you. You'd roll over on your side, facing away from him, and you felt his stomach press into your back and then an arm draped over your side. This is good, right? You make a really perfect little spoon against me. Very much so. You're so soft and warm, and I feel really comfortable against you right now. <laughs> good. You felt him kiss the back of your head and nuzzle against you before resting his snout over you. With his hand on your stomach, you grabbed his paw and held it close to you. Sweet jeans, Harold. L love you. <laughs> I love you. He snuggled you close one final time and then relaxed. It was only a matter of minutes before he was out cold, snoring loudly beside you. This man really br brings meaning to sawing logs. <sighs> I don't know what that means. I'm glad he can go to sleep so easily, and I can only hope I'll be as lucky. Day 27, Saturday. Ah, it looks like we finally reached the days that are fully implemented because the calendar up in the top left corner is actually in the proper place. So I guess, hopefully from now on, we'll be seeing proper spy, sp uh, sprite placements in- Hey! Get down from there. So thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the trained and professional speaker with the voice in my head when I say, fairly well. Bye, everyone!